Hey y'all, I'm about to can some chili beans. That's like a chili starter, makes a quick dinner. It's not all the way made into chili because the beef and stuff isn't in it, but it's got the beans with all the seasoning and everything. So it uh, makes it a little faster for dinner. Anyway, I don't buy the chili seasoning mix at the store. I don't like the way it tastes. I have to doctor it up anyway. If I'm going to have to doctor it up anyway, I'm just going to make my own. So, let's get to it. Guys, it takes quite a few spices. Okay? So, first thing I'm going to put in there is chili powder. Now, I use New Mexican chili powder, so it's a little hotter than possibly some that you might get at your local store. Um... I put a tablespoon of it. If it's if that's too spicy for you, put a little less. If it's not spicy enough, put a little more. I kind of go mid-ground because a lot of times I'm feeding this to a kid. Um, my friend's two kids come over to visit quite a bit, so I want to make sure that it's ready so that I don't have to worry about it. it's too hot for them. So I put a tablespoon Next thing is paprika. I use two tablespoons of regular paprika and two tablespoons of smoked paprika because I like that little bit of smoky flavor, but I don't want too much of the smoky flavor. So I use a little of both. Garlic powder, a tablespoon. I'm making a double batch here, guys, so don't like freak out that I'm putting double everything that I tell you to put. Oh, you know what? I didn't put double my chili powder. That was not going to be very flavorful. Okay. Um, tablespoon of onion powder. I guess, I guess I could just kind of put your camera so you can see my bow, huh? Where's the camera? Oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe not. There we go. Okay. Tablespoon of onion powder. Told you I'm doing double, so don't freak out about it. Okay. Cumin. We are going to put. That, there's my. There it is. We're going to put a teaspoon of cumin. A teaspoon of oregano. I like the Mexican oregano better than regular oregano. So it doesn't really matter whichever one you want to use. Use whichever. A teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of cayenne. I said, this goes back to that heat level, guys. If that's too spicy for you, put less. If it's not spicy enough, put more. I don't want you all to, to burn your mouths off, but, you know, when I'm when I'm eating chili, I kind of, I want to feel it. I want to feel it in my stomach. I want to feel it. <laughs> they don't give me heartburn. I didn't make it spicy enough. Okay. Uh, whoops. I had to grab the wrong spoon there. We're going to put half a teaspoon of pepper. I said I'm just doubling everything because I'm going to be making a lot of canned chili beans. Okay, guys, these next two things, you're going to think I'm super weird. But seriously, it tastes so freaking good. So freaking good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to put is a half a teaspoon of espresso powder and no Libby for y'all don't know that's my daughter this is not my caffeine coffee addiction speaking it tastes good you like my chili so shush that's what's in it and then we're gonna put a half a teaspoon of dark cocoa powder 
I know it sounds weird, guys. It really, really, really sounds weird. But a lot of the other spice profile that you have in like a Southwest type chili is based on Mexican flavors. And chocolate and coffee just complement those flavors so well. Okay, now I'm just gonna take my whisk. I'm gonna whisk this together. I like to use my four cup measuring cup to do this because it's got that spout, which makes it easy for me to pour into a, a storage container of some kind. Okay, so how much of this do I use? I use about a quarter of a cup for a batch of chili, which a batch of chili is one pound of ground beef and like two quarts of my home canned beans. So um, I think that's like three cans of beans, roughly. Like two cups of, of dried beans cooked, roughly. Okay, guys. So I have these cute little, oh, my little thing there. Okay. So. One of the things I store in, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit, and you can store it in a lot of things, guys. I'm actually going to do a separate video on different ways that I store, different things I store my spices in, where I get them. Mason jar. For something I'm making this much of, I use a mason jar, and I like the wide mouth just because it's easier. But you can use any kind of storage jar. Now, if I only did what the amounts I told you, it fits into one of these cute little four ounce jars that I got at Family Dollar. So, you know, they got cute mason jars out there, guys. Don't, don't think that your storage has to be plain. If you don't like the way regular mason jars look, get some of the cuter mason jars. But that's what I do. You can mix up just this mix and put it in a, in a jar and store it and then use it whenever you're going to make your chili. Or you can do it like me and can your beans with the seasoning. And then when it comes time for me to make chili and I want a fast dinner, all I got to do is brown some ground beef and onions and throw in my canned beans, my home canned beans that already got all the seasoning in it. So that's up to you whether you want to do it, which way you want to do. I'm going to do a bunch of these videos because, guys, there's so many seasoning mixes out there that I just don't like the way they taste. They charge too much. A lot of them have a lot of sodium, a lot of added things. I get migraines with MSG, so I like to avoid anything that's got MSG in it. And a lot of those seasoning mixes have MSG as a preservative and a flavor enhancer. So I try to avoid those. Um, when I'm mixing my own spices, I know what's going into it. So I'm going to my recipe, how I would make it if I was making anything from scratch. But I've got my seasoning mix pre-mixed, so it's faster for me than taking each individual jar out and measuring each individual thing. So up to you if you want to try this or not, but I encourage you to try it with the chocolate and the espresso. I really do because it's really good. Y'all have a good day.